You guys haven't an... They haven't a clue. I can tell you that right now. What about Rebecca? Did she make any? Not one phone call, spend more time shuffling a piece of paper in her hand. Continually got up and walked out of the office, all the time out of there. Doesn't answer the phone when it rings. And in fact, on one occasion, I could see they were fed up, so they answered the phone and put it straight down again so that they cut the call off. The other fella never made a single phone call until eventually, oh, I'm telling you. Then, when he did get on the phone, four phone calls that he made out, and every one of them left a voicemail and expected the client to phone him back. <laughs> Rebecca, it's your decision what you want to do, but my own personal feeling is, quite honestly, you just, I think you're wasting your time, mm. be quite honest. Mm. She has absolutely no interest whatsoever, no. none. The only guy who put any effort in at all was mine. You've got to gain some excitement, you've got to get some excitement in there. Mm. They did. <laughs> they just haven't fallen over. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah. And you can't have a company survive with that kind of attitude no. in there. I'll tell you something now, I'd fire the whole bloody lot. They, uh, you know, it's just basically they've come along and sort of made us face reality, really, haven't they? No, you can't get blood out of a stone, can you? I don't know. Perhaps I could give them a last chance. You know, just say you know that f you've got to do this, otherwise you fucking out. But they've had so many chances. <laughs> I don't know. I'll go and have a little word with our one thingy. We've um, got you in all here today. To, to give you a bit of a frank talking to. You know, you need a bit of a wake-up call, so take this as a wake-up call. You know, smell the fucking coffee, yeah? The customer is king. You know, if someone left a message in your answer machine at home and said, oh, by the way, um, if you are interested, give us a ring. Because he's going to think, fuck you. Who the fuck do you think you are? Madonna? We were going to make some decisions, right? You think probably a better answer, because I'm a bit gutted to tell you, really. You know. Decision we've made this morning, I've made, however I've been overruled, was that I was going to sack the sales team. We're at a stage now where we don't know what to do with you. Well, it's, and we've been you're a little bit excluded yeah. from that, to be honest with you, Michael, because <clears throat> just to put him on a pedestal for a moment. Yeah. The only person he said was on the phone and just making the calls was Michael. I just want to defend these guys as well because. Uh, well, you don't have I, to, so I, don't. I know it's. Um, you don't have to. Well, I'm defending, to I'm defending myself as well. Well, I don't want to wear it. You're here. You ain't, you ain't meant to be in here, really, to have a bollocking, right? But you are. Virtue of the fact, I'm the MD of the company, I'm telling you what I want you to do. If you don't want to do it, there's the door. I ain't bothered. You know, what, what the target is is that you've each got to do 40,000 sales between now and December the 23rd. I'm not saying I'll just do it off the top. I've got something to help you do it. Right, now, we've come up with all, in all good traditions, we've got a, a Merry Christmas offer. If people are, uh, have decided in their own minds that they don't have any money until after Christmas, there's not a lot we can do about it. We're, we're not interested. We're asking, well, I don't want your feedback. I want you to phone up people and tell them that. That's what I want you to do. I'm not asking for a discourse about the realities of what people's buying behaviour is at Christmas. All I'm interested in is, is that you're going to go away and you're going to do that. OK, well, let's do it. Let's get that Christmas message across then. Get them church bells ringing across the land. The conservatory offer to beat all others. Yeah? Come on, smile. Where's your smile? You know, raise the corners of your mouth. Well, I'm on. Thank you. What that buzzer was saying was a load of bullshit. He was just chatting shit. Because I was fucking, I knew what he was going to say. About putting the phone down on people. I knocked the thing in the fucking room and then I put it down. It's not putting the phone down on people at all. And don't leave messages. What do I do then? Not speak to him. He's just fucking, I don't know. What Andy said was a bit out of order as well. 
about he decided that he wants to sack us all anyway and like John overruled it. Mm -hmm. no. Everyone's a bit mad now. It's uh it's just like you've just run into a um pure stubbornness really. It's like a dad who's like telling his kid what is, you know. You will sell now, because I told you to. Fucking wanted to say something in their defence. Fucking hell, it's been here three fucking minutes. I don't know fucking jack shit. I think it would have been better getting rid of myself. <laughs> fucking hell. Fucking Albert Einstein's about to fucking speak. And I don't see how, let's say, you're going to do it now or your ass on your ass is going to change anything. Apart from, do you know, fuck with morale, really. It was a lot easier for me to sell this morning, I'll tell you that. In an effort to boost the flagging sales, Anne's taking on Basil's advice and has come up with a way of injecting some energy into the sales room. What we decided to do was we thought it'd be nice if um, when they make a sale they can either ring a bell or bang a gong or something. <laughs> In and I like that. It's good, isn't it? Mm. But we can put that up on the wall next to the sales board and when they go and write their figure up, they can press the button. But you can record your own thing. I didn't know whether you wanted the Rocky tune on it or something. Nah, it's a bit passe, isn't it? It's a bit passe, apparently. Yes, I've sold! Yes, I've sold! I've sold Well, this is what happens when someone sells something. If you want to work in another room, work in another room, mate. <sighs> what happened? This is just a bit much. Yeah. What you know, you little bugger? He's landed on his little paws, hasn't he? Oh. Oh, God, he's lovely. <laughs> Look at them all making a fuss of him. Grown men. They've <laughs> all turned soft over the dog. But Anne hasn't turned soft on her drive to cut costs. Though John's overruled her plan to lose five members of staff, she's insisting that he make at least one person redundant. Just got to tell everybody that one of the reasons why, we've got to be honest with them. But as I say, they all know it's been so quiet. It's left to John to explain to the men why one of their workmates has gone. There's no easy way for a company our size to really come to terms with getting rid of someone we work with day in, day out. We don't take decisions like this lightly and we couldn't afford to carry them with the volume we're doing. Now we run a business here, you know, two plus two's got to equal four. That's what it is. You know, we wait for, you know, it might sound a bit harsh, but that's the way it is. So, any questions or anything? Anyone want to say anything? Ask me anything while I'm here. Look at the amount of stuff I've got up here. Absolutely stacks of stuff. And now I can't get anybody to help me. Well, you have got someone to help you. They can't do it. OK. Well, you need to speak to Andy Savory then, don't you, and Anne? Because you need help. Is it the factory floor that gets cut first? <coughs> yeah. yeah. And there's... Dead right. I think yeah, it pains I'm me not sure, to I'm not it. sure what wages he was on, but I can't see it making that much difference, to be honest. Over yeah. the year, maybe. Yeah. But initially, you're not going to Well, let me tell you something, diet. Martin. You don't, work, you don't work out. We're a business. One, one person's not going to make that much difference, is it? Well, it does. That's why we've done it. All right, well, I won't keep you any longer, then. All right. After hearing the reaction of the lads in the factory, John's now having second thoughts.
Now, what do I have to go down there and fucking tell them? What else were we meant to do? You've been telling us for weeks we're going to have well, to get Well, I did say you could have waited a fucking till the end of this week to see if it picked up. Yeah, but we had more facts than you did, and you've just started this blooming barrage of, I think you've made a wrong decision, I think you've made a wrong decision, based on the comments of one person leaning over the balcony. Well, he, he made a point, didn't he? You're the chairman. You're meant, not meant to walk into the office and start shouting at us two for making a decision. Well, I don't think you checked it out very well, personally. OK. Because the work, you should have known what was going on beforehand. Mm -hmm. oh, I mean, well, if no... you like John, I'll phone mm. him up and tell him we made a big mistake. Just come back. We had a bad dream. No. His letter hasn't gone in the post. Is that what you want me to do? No. So you do think we made the right decision? Yeah. I'll tell you what, the shit we've had today, I almost wish that we'd stuck with our original plan of saying, right, three or four. Because we wouldn't have felt any worse. No. I just hope to flaming God that it can all be pulled right now and that we don't have to go through this again. Because next time, we're going to stick with the decision. And if we say three, it's going to be three. But I'll tell you what, a business that carries on carrying people is a business that's going nowhere. Mm. Do you want to be like that? No. You know, the next time we do have to go to the bank to get our own bloody money to put into the place, to keep somebody because you don't want to let them go, let them come to the bank with us and see how difficult that decision is. Mm. Would they go to their bank and get their money out to keep somebody in a job? No. No. It's bloody us every time. Well, I'll tell you what. If you want people to stop making decisions and, you know, to stop the company moving on, then that's great. You carry on shouting at us for making a decision. It's been a bloody shit day. to lose somebody went down that well really. It just didn't sit right that we all get on a plane and fly off to Cork and party the night away. It just did not, it just didn't sit right. <sighs> but we did have that brief moment where we thought, oh hang it, let's just, you know, anyone who does still want to go, we'll just go, but mm. I just think we're asking for trouble. Mm. I know what I'm like when I've got a drink in me. Mm. I get very, very vocal in there. I'm going to leave it. Do it next year. We'll go over for the uh, Holy Eucharist. What's that? Something to do with Easter, innit? <laughs> Irish, Catholics, I don't know. It would be nice to go in the New Year sometime, mm. wouldn't it? Mm. But I can just imagine now some people will probably Perhaps just turn around and say no for the hell of it. Take them to Lourdes. Get them all blessed. Holy water or something. Start the evil. Now is the winter of our, of our discontent. We have had a steady stream of idiots come through this door. Supposedly got somebody starting, Ryan, and he offered to be team leader. If I was forming a boy band, him and two others. Guys, you are where you are because that's where you've chosen to be. Never, never, never give up. He's just a fucking arsehole. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't give a shit about anyone in there.